This experiment is a continuation and takes a more in-depth look at buffer systems, such as those briefly examined in the first part of this experiment. A buffer is a solution consisting of a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. These mixtures are able to resist changes in pH when small amounts of acid or base are added. The amount of acid or base that can be added without significantly changing the pH is called the buffer capacity. The capacity of a buffer is specifically described as being the number of moles of hydronium or hydroxide ions required to change the pH of the buffer solution by plus or minus one pH unit. Last week you found the half neutralization point in the buffer region of your titration curve. This is the point where the concentration of acetic acid is equal to the concentration of its conjugate base. Considering the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, this is the point where the logarithm portion of the expression is equal to zero, meaning that the pH is equal to the pKa. Experimentally, this point is found by dividing the volume of the titrant required to reach the equivalence point in half to find the half neutralization point and interpolating the graph to the pH at that volume. To prepare a buffer solution, you will first need to make a dilute vinegar solution the same way you did in part A of this experiment. Pipette 10 milliliters of the provided vinegar solution into a 100 milliliter volumetric flask and dilute the mark with the ionized water. Pipette 25 milliliters of your diluted vinegar solution into a 250 milliliter beaker and, using a burette, add half the amount of sodium hydroxide required to reach the equivalence point of your titration in part A. Add 75 milliliters of deionized water to the beaker using a graduated cylinder. This should produce a solution containing approximately equal amounts of acetic acid and the acetate ion. You will prepare two of these solutions and test what happens as you add a strong acid or a strong base. You will obtain a pH meter and perform a two-point calibration. Set up a burette containing 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid and place one of your prepared buffer solutions, containing a magnetic stir bar, below it. Place the pH and temperature electrodes in the solution, high enough that they won't come into contact with the magnetic stir bar. Record the initial pH of the buffer solution. It should be close to the pKa of the acetic acid. Add hydrochloric acid from the burette to your buffer solution in 0.5 milliliter aliquots, recording the pH and total volume of acid added after each aliquot. Continue this until the pH decreases by 2 units. Repeat this procedure with a second buffer solution, but adding 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide for the to the solution instead. Remember to record the initial pH of the buffer. For this solution, add base until the pH increases by 2 units recording pH and volume of base added for each aliquot, the same way you did for the previous solution. The pH and volume data you obtained will be plotted as shown. The buffer capacity can be determined from this graph by finding the volumes of hydronium or hydroxide added to the solution that caused a pH change from the initial pH of the solution to minus or plus 1. By multiplying the volume 
by the concentration of the acid or base which was used, the number of moles of hydronium or hydroxide it took to cause the change in pH of the buffer can be found. The number of moles of hydroxide and hydronium you find experimentally will be compared to the theoretical values you calculate with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Because the concentrations of acetate and acetic acid are dependent on the same volume of solution for this experiment, the volume portions of the two concentrations can cancel leaving only the moles of acetate and acetic acid in the expression. Based on the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, if the pH is increased by one unit, this is the same as pKa increasing by one unit. Therefore, pKa plus one can be substituted into the expression for pH. Both hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are strong, so they react completely with acetic acid or acetate in a one-to-one -one ratio. Looking only at sodium hydroxide, we will call the number of moles added to the solution to cause a pH change of positive one, x. This addition of x moles causes the moles of acetic acid to decrease by x and the number of moles of acetate to increase by x. Substituting everything into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, as shown on the slide, produces the expression pKa plus 1 equals the pKa plus the log of the moles of acetate plus x divided by the moles of acetic acid Minux. The pKa values on either side cancel, leaving you with a log of the moles of acetate plus x divided by the moles of acetic acid minus x being equal to 1. Solving this expression for x will give you the theoretical number of moles of sodium hydroxide that have to be added to the buffer solution to cause a pH shift of positive 1. The moles of hydrochloric acid that need to be added to cause the pH to decrease by one unit are calculated similarly. In this case, the pH is being reduced by the acid, so the pH is equal to the pKa minus 1. In this case, hydrochloric acid reacts with acetate to form acetic acid. We will call the moles of hydrochloric acid Y. As the reaction occurs, the number of moles of acetic acid increase by Y, while the moles of acetate decrease by Y. Substituting everything back into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation gives the expression pKa minus 1 equal pKa plus the log of the moles of acetate minus y divided by the moles of acetic acid plus y. The pKa values cancel, leaving you with a negative 1 being equal to the log of the moles of acetate minus y divided by the moles of acetic acid plus y. Solving the expression for y gives you the moles of hydrochloric acid that will cause a decrease in pH by negative 1 if added to the buffer.